Welcome, everyone. I just started the uh, recording of tonight's leadership workshop. Um, tonight's topic is on vision and goals being presented by Mr. Gupta and Ms. Kama. So thank you both. We really appreciate it. Um, as I often share at the start of each of these, um, a reminder that uh, we're all in different places when it comes to this topic of vision and goals. Um, some of you um, have seen this uh, in the previous year, and for some of you, this is brand new. Um, and so please remember uh, to be cognizant of that, um, in, especially in the breakout rooms. So, so leave space um, for those with whom this content may be newer. Um, and also there's an opportunity here for modeling these concepts um, throughout the evening um, as well. Um, this is certainly our introduction or refresher on vision goals, um, but it is not the uh, end of the topic. Um, and a reminder that next week, um, the captains will lead us um, in a vision and goals and objectives uh, refinement. Um, and these aren't just something we do for a couple sessions. Um, this should drive everything we do every day at every meeting. Um, and so very important information this evening. Um, so that's it for me. So please take it away. All right. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining on a week which is busy uh, with travel and, and work. So I appreciate you guys spending the time. And I know this is a refresher for most. One thing just to add to what we mentioned before, and I tell whoever I can meet, is that this is not just for leaders, right? This is for everybody. This is including all the team members. This is um, relevant. Um, even before you start getting into that mindset. So sometimes I feel uh, some members think that only if I'm a leader, I need to be joining this session. It's the quite the opposite in some ways, right? Because we expect some of these things from the leaders anyway, uh, or th them to understand these concepts. So with that, with, let's uh, jump right in. So uh, essentially, what are the two key areas we are working today in terms of the outcomes? Uh, it is obviously to establish uh, a better understanding of the vision and mission and the differences between those concepts. And the other part is that, you know, we are focusing on how to set the goals so they are more effective uh, for the year through the preparation phase and through the competition phase. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, to reiterate that point, this is to establish a better culture and performance for everybody in the team because this needs to be a guiding principle for all members, whether existing or new, who have joined the Husky Robotics. So starting with the vision and mission, uh, and I think you guys obviously are quite familiar with uh, the concepts, but you know, to retrade why is this important uh, for any unit, whether it's a robotics team or any cooperation or a government body or even uh, you know a team uh, of people who are uh, doing something as as a group you know even climbing a mountain you need to have some kind of guiding principles so that you have an end in mind you are focusing on you know better understanding as a group what you're trying to achieve what the program is about um, it sets you better in a better position to achieve the success and then of course work as a unit as a as a team because uh, in an individual fashion, if you understand, that's not really going to help you build the culture you want or the outcomes you want, unless everybody is aligned with that mindset. So in, in those concepts and objectives and outcomes, you know, one of the things, uh, given that all of you guys have been, or most of you have been involved in this, uh, in this kind of sessions before, uh, one of the key things let's remind ourselves is that what are the differences between all of these aspects, between vision, mission, goal, values, and culture? Because they're all connected in some ways. We'll talk about it, but just let's just reflect on what that really is, uh, the differences, and then how do you think it's relevant from uh, or important to Huskies, or why is it important to Huskies? Um, in the context of, again, going back to the point that every team member needs to have a better view of all of these aspects and not just the task at hand. So I'm so special that we can we do a breakout quick session, maybe keep it short rather than five minutes. We can just do three minutes. 
and have them Absolutely. discuss the back. Absolutely. I've almost got everybody in the right place. And then focus on, uh, you know, also we'll do this in a different uh, chat group rather than a breakout session, but just also uh, uh, start thinking about how things have evolved, especially when it comes to vision and mission for the Husky Robotics program. So I've got it set up to do, just as a reminder for everyone, it's going to count down for two minutes, but then you get one more minute before your return here. So three minutes total. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, looks like everybody is back. Awesome. All right, that was a short and sweet breakout, but uh, I want to at least call out a, a few groups to share their thoughts. I know we, we said, let's talk about a number of things and differences and how it has evolved, but I want to see if, what do you guys think in terms of uh, what was discussed? So anybody wants to volunteer before we call up names? I think Aaron has his name, his hand up first. Oh, go ahead. Um, we said that the difference between a vision and a mission and sort of the rest of these as well is sort of scale more so. Like vision, mission, goals, values, culture, all sort of cover the same things. But each one is on its own level of specificity and its own level of how far into the future are we thinking, immediate or very, very distant. Very well put. I think I, I like that in terms of how you brought up the two points of being specific and, and from a timeline perspective, how far out are you thinking about? Very valid point. Great way. Thank you. Franklin? One of the things that we talked about were that like our vision and our mission, well, they'll get like minor um, just verbiage edits each year. They're mostly going to stay the same, whereas goals will change every year depending on how we want to accomplish our vision mission. And then it's the same thing with values and culture. Like those are slow moving, but they'll they'll update just as people on the team update and as the world changes. Awesome. I think between the two of you covered pretty much the the key points, you know, how these how specific it is, how far are you thinking, and how often you think about refreshing or updating uh, these these areas because a vision is set and you keep up on it throughout your yeah, your achievement then versus tactical things which may change. You know, culture also gets evolves over time, and that's more uh, an outcome of all of these areas and how you exercise them on a daily basis. So, so great. I think you guys, uh, I would say pretty much very well understand the key differences and how it really evolves over time. So, you know, just summarizing, which I, you guys have already uh, stated that when it comes to the vision and mission, it's more of the defining the why, right? Why are you doing this? And these are defined at the overall program or unit level. So from FRC has a vision and mission, you know, Husky Robotics has a vision and mission. And these once defined should not change, even though we talk about how vision may have evolved for Husky Robotics, but vision is pretty much the same. So it's like a guiding beacon of what do you want to achieve? And it's uh, pretty much drives everything else. So one layer drives the other layer. You have to basically look at the vision to define the mission. And then once you get down to further levels of the what, as in what are you going to do, uh, you know, in terms of achieving that vision mission, it, it's going to guide the next layer of specific details. Uh, same thing on the strategies and tactics. So think about vision and mission once you are defining that upfront, it's not evolving every year. Your objective and goal might evolve. Not, I won't say might, but it does evolve every year or it gets defined. But some of the goals and objectives may get defined before you get into a competition. And other goals may get defined after you start the competition because they're specific to what you want to achieve as a team. And for example, you want one of the goals could be, of course, you want to win the championship. Uh, so how do you want to do that? 
what are the specific areas once that competition is signed. You might define this much earlier, but you may evolve this as you go along. And then strategies and tactics, the how is exactly, uh, there are certain things you may prepare for before the competition. Others, most of these things will happen once you start getting into the mode. You have a couple of weeks when you get to know about what you have to build, and then your uh, essentially your strategies and the tasks you want to do, which are in the tactics, get go from week after week, right? So you might say, we want to make sure that we are ready two weeks before the competition so we can do mock trails, we can uh, test it out, we can probably go to a, 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 a smaller competition and then have enough iterations to evolve uh, the robot to be ready for the actual competition. So things like that might get set as, as goals. So uh, example, I think uh, very familiar, again, using uh, some of the robotics example, you want to have a, you know, create the best robot in the world. Again, this might not be a, a mission because again, this was used as a, just as a very generic example uh, to show the difference between each of the layers. Uh, the, when you get to the goals, you start to use specific metrics or outcomes. And then the the how is exactly defining, saying you want to build a prototype or you want to use a new uh, latest model which has come out and how do you evolve, prepare for that before the competition. You know, you, yeah, that is a specific strategy you want to evolve because you want to, you have learned from past year. And some of the... Uh, the connection between all of these, we I want to remind the fact that we, in the other workshops, we have talked about the fact that there is sovereign leadership, situation leadership, crucial conversations, all of these things at an underlying layer are some of the executions you're doing as a leader and as a team member. But the guiding uh, you know, vision, mission, and values essentially are built overall culture because culture is not something you write on paper. Uh, culture is basically saying that does everybody understand all of these and does not only understand, but do they exercise this on a daily basis? Because uh, you may see uh, other robotics team, you may see, uh, you may have examples of other companies uh, or any other unit, which may have great vision and mission written down on paper, yet their culture is probably not good or toxic. Reason is that it's one thing to write it on paper and another thing to actually execute it on a daily basis. So you always have to refer it back and say, are we, do we really understand that is, are we on track? Have we moved it uh, beyond that? Maybe very relevant recent example, which I'm sure you guys have been talking about in school is OpenAI, right? OpenAI's vision was to create uh, AI, which is accessible to everybody, uh, is, is secure, does not you know, cause human harm and likely all the chaos which is happening is because uh, the board felt that the team which is executing this has uh, you know swayed away from the vision and mission and that's why they're commercializing is more mm -hmm. and they're not doing the non-profit aspect of Microsoft, what they Microsoft bets in the Sokara. so they acquired ai open ai without all, for zero dollars because they offered everybody jobs with open ai that's... Yeah, Microsoft has. So, so this is because it aligns with Microsoft. So this is the difference, right? In the right? scheme of things, that's zero dollars. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, do you know that your microphone is on? Is he speaking to us or? It's tough to understand you. Sorry. No, he was not. Okay. I thought he was talking about... I thought he said that Microsoft was offering job to all of the employees of OpenAI. So uh, maybe I heard that, but that brings up the other point that Microsoft vision or mission and all the goals they have, it aligns with how OpenAI profit unit is, is trying to achieve, right? But for OpenAI, their vision and mission is different. It doesn't align with what the team is executing on. So again, it they might go to Microsoft because it aligns with their outcome, but not with open AI. So that's an example of, you know, how you need to make sure that you are you you are true to what you want to achieve. Obviously the the chaos or impact happening is a different thing. How you 
uh, how the culture of OpenAI may have got impacted, but it's something they can easily bring back if they are true to what they want to achieve. So I will, you know, not refer to LinkedIn example because we did talk about OpenAI as a very relevant example in the current world. Uh, for Husky values, it's uh, just to, as a reminder, of course, inclusion, make sure that everybody has, uh, we want to make sure is involved and uh, feels, uh, has a sense of belonging. Uh, we create sustainable processes and, and solutions and, and robots so that, uh, you know, again, driving the, the concept of what uh, FRC is trying to achieve, uh, part of what we are doing as part of the cities, and also making sure everybody understands is to create leaders uh, for you in the future and also for newcom uh, newcomers to robotics team. Uh, being all professional is another area for us to make sure we we create a great culture. So all these core values um, are, and the value, the core values for F FRC, I think first FRC and then for Husky Robotics, we should always remind ourselves as we deal with daily activities and tasks. This is not something you look at at the beginning of the robotic season and then, uh, you know, you, you know, skip it till the next year. Uh, it's your responsibility also to remind others in the team not just as a leader, but also as a team member, so that uh, you know it's not just uh, one unit performing well, you all need to perform well together. So all of these values and outcomes are important. And these are some other things we think we did uh, from last year. What do you guys think are um, the true values you need to make sure everyone in the team understands? So I, I want to take a quick example. Uh, again, we talked about the OpenAI as, as one, but you see there are examples of uh, the uh, FRC has a, has a vision. And again, these are things you define and uh, follow and don't necessarily change. LinkedIn has the example of saying, create economic opportunity for every member of global workforce. It does not talk about uh, the LinkedIn as a product, it does not talk about any of the, the what and the how. It simply create an opportunity for everybody. Uh, Nike uh, vision is to create an authentic, connected, and distinctive brand. Now, I want to ask, and maybe you guys can come off mute or put in the chat, between LinkedIn and Nike, which one do you like better as a vision? And, and why? Does anybody have a, a thought or a comment about it. Either type it or come off mute if you want to. No, I don't really like the Nike one. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. So maybe Aaron, I'll start with you. Why do you think you don't like the Nike one? You can come off mute or, or type, that's fine. Rather than outlining substance-based call. Okay, that's a good point. I was uh, more thinking along the lines of Nike, you know, as a vision, my preference always is to have a vision which is outward looking. By that I mean is it's what are you, how will your vision impact others? whether it's a community, whether it's a, um, you know, add to your customers. Uh, so in the case of LinkedIn, it's talking about how it's going to create an opportunity for the global workforce, right? It doesn't say, let's create a brand for ourselves. Nike is a little bit more inward focused. Let's create a brand for ourselves, right? How is, it, how is it impacting others? How does it make others feel, even though their marketing engine is obviously great, uh, but that's why, in my opinion, your vision should always be outward looking. And you will get opportunities to do this in your career as well. So don't think about that, you know, I don't need to think about this. So same thing on the mission aspect, right? So once you start uh, creating, our, LinkedIn is like, you know, we want to create opportunities. So uh, what? how do we do that? Is by connecting the professionals. So that's gets into the networking aspect. How do you create opportunity? There are different, 
you know, hundreds of ways to create opportunities for folks, but networking is one aspect. And Nike's now gets in a way which is more out of looking, right? Now, what is their mission? How do we create a more authentic brand? By inspiring every athlete in the world. And this is where Nike excels, right? They start to get focus on every individual uh, to that point. Uh, FRC starts to get into, you know, inspiring young generation on focus on science and technology, innovation, leadership, communications, so all of those things, which obviously reflects in Husky Robotics as well. So I remember lot from last year, we had, uh, we had some, I don't say vague, but uh, we were trying to define what is that uh, clear statement of vision and mission for Husky Robotics. So for now, let's get down to the, uh, our team. Uh, and we said, our vision is to inspire every student to be a confident leader, courageous innovator, and passionate dreamer. So that I feel is really effective. It's still, again, outward looking, focusing on the students and their future, and not just the outcome of this robotics competition. From a mission perspective, I think, again, it was very precise, and it embraces some of the values within itself. And what we discussed last time is that how do we make it a little bit more effective? And uh, I think Mr. Smith mentioned that there was a workshop which was done, which is, again, happening this year, to define again revisit this uh, because the team is still evolving i know it's it's robotics has been around for years but how do we ensure we continue to do this better so what i i see very encouraging is that you know from last year to this year we have defined the mission to be a little bit more uh, specific i think one of the comments Aaron you made was how do we make things more specific so uh, while most missions usually are shorter, but uh, given how we want to make sure everybody truly understands the uh, the mission in a more specific manner, you can see that it was defined in a way which is defined, you know, highlighting the areas like leadership, highlighting how you need to be focused on your personal and professional growth, uh, focus on innovation. Uh, again, it's 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 doing some of the values which we already defined create an annual model for teams to follow. That's very critical for robotics, right? You want to, every year you want to come back and not start from scratch. You want to build on what you already know and create future real leaders. So, so this, is, this is great. I'm sure you guys were involved with this. So one of the things we want to do uh, as a quick chat uh, and rather than a breakout is how has this evolved? And if you guys think that uh, you have this slide in your hands out, handouts uh, as far as the last year mission versus this year. What I really want to ask the teams is that uh, how do you think this has evolved out there? Is this more effective in defining um, you know, what, the goal, what the overall outcome is? And what are other areas you would want to probably see? Or maybe you might think it's too elaborate, we should make it more specific or short or maybe add a few more things. Uh, but I want to ask people who were involved in this and also others, uh, what they think. Is it more aligned towards what you want to understand? So I'll invite you guys to put it in the chat or come off mute, especially folks who have not commented so far before I start calling out names. <laughs> So do you guys think the new vision or mission is more helps you better understand? And how? Anybody? Let's start. Maybe Ayush, do you want to comment anything? Jay? Could we go to the previous slide? I think they can then see the... Do you guys uh, not have access to the handouts or is the... The link was sent, right, Mr. Schmidt? It was, and Mr. John shared in the chat that the old and new mission statements are on slide five. So if you're looking through the handouts, you can compare those in slide five. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen as well. Hopefully you guys can see it, right? Yeah, um, I can like, yeah, so I think for the mission, especially like since last year, I think um, 
it's really evolved in the sense that like we in like the original one you talk about like inclusion of all people and ideas and sustainable for a future but in this new one like we really go into depth of like how we kind of do this in a sense so like how we kind of make this impact instead of just that broad idea yeah good boy good point it does get into a little bit of the how which is fine um because uh, uh in in you may have objectives which can define this annual model we brought in the annual model we uh, you know we we got a little bit more elaborative on some of the aspects which are included so that's that's good in my opinion it, it in in vision between vision and mission it's you can tell anybody what you do and how you do it it's a good point anybody else I think I call OJ. J thoughts. Jay, can you hear us? Yeah. I'm putting on the spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, it gets more into specifics than the new one. And what what do you think is the more specific part? Uh, focus on on their future like after the team yeah good yeah it's the future as well and then getting a bit a bit more into the how so great so i, I think we uh, maybe the vision and mission moving forward uh, for especially for husky robotics should not change much and this is now set in as a guiding uh, point but i will restate uh, the same statement as before that Ensure that not only you understand, but help your teams understand. If you are a certain unit lead or, or manager, make sure that you, you have this available and keep reminding your team members uh, about the overall goal because it's, it's, it's the guiding uh, principle as far as creating a good culture on a daily basis, right? So they uh, sometimes they'll think these are like generic things, but it's not, it's not really because these are going to define the future leaders. So good chat. Uh, with that, I think we are going to switch to our goals, um, and I'll hand over to uh, to Ritu to lead the rest of the presentation. Great, great. Do you want me to share my screen? I can keep sharing if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's good. So yeah, I uh, so um, I think the uh, it's a good segue into transitioning to what and how right we talked about why uh how how does the team think about themselves when they think about vision and mission and really it's more about how the team everybody on the team not just the leaders but everybody on the team embodies that vision and mission but then we transition to okay we're here to compete we're here to uh actualize a lot of the things that we say in our vision and mission and so how do we do that? And one of the ways to do that is to set goals, right? And we talked about that in the beginning of the presentation. So what is a goal? Um, and a goal is really an idea of a result or a future state that a, pe a person, a specific person, a group of people, uh, team members plan and vision, and then they're committed to achieving that goal, right? They're committed to achieving that end result or the desired result. Uh, we we also said in the very beginning uh, of this presentation, and I'm sure in many other presentations also you've seen, begin with the end in mind, right? So that's that's what is very important. What is it that we're here to do? Uh, what is it that we're striving together to achieve? Um, so goals really represent our decisions, our commitments as a team uh, that will uh, uh, that will help us get to the end result. And some of the examples. Uh, you can see some generic examples. I spend an hour in the gym four days a week, but right? that's a that's a pretty good goal because it's very specific. It talks about what you as a person or somebody as a person is going to do uh, and how many times and you know they, 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 their goal is to get better, more healthy. So that's exactly what uh, the example states. As far as Husky's um, goal and objective example is concerned, we pick one of the ones from uh, the previous years. Uh, that we have a goal to have our shooter hit a target that's four meters away with an accuracy of 90%. That's very specific, right? We're building a very specific mechanism for the robot 
and that specific mechanism has a goal uh, to hit that target four meters away with an accuracy of 90 percent so that's a good example of a goal that a team can think of you know as we get into the build season and so on um one of the things that separates goals from other concepts that we talk we're talking about in this set, uh, presentation is that goals are goals have a um, you know have certain characteristics for them to be good goals right um, and the characteristics are uh, outlined on the slide and we call them smart characteristics or smart goals and what does that stand for they have to be specific so you have to have a very detailed statement on what you are planning to achieve or envisioning to achieve what's that end result that we're trying to get out of setting this goal they have to be measurable right so you have to be able to measure whether we are moving towards achieving that goal how do we look at our progress over a course of time and can it give us a sense of whether we're going to hit the goal or not hit the goal right so it has to be measurable and you can demonstrate that you're moving towards achieving that goal as you proceed forward in the time horizon they have to be attainable so if everybody did their best on the team and we have we're committed uh, we did the hard work, we're dedicated, everyone did their part, then is the goal, goal attainable, right? Uh, and sometimes people can set goals that necessarily are not attainable, right? They're not in the ability for the team to achieve. So setting those types of goals is a recipe um, for failure. So it's better to think through what goals are we setting for the team and are they attainable by uh, the team uh, in place. They have to be relevant, of course, they have to align with mission and mission and values and uh, vision that we just talked about. And they have to be time-based, right? Goals have specific milestones, deadlines, frequency, dates, so you know uh, by when you have to achieve those goals and you can actually track uh, success to those goals. So I outlined some examples of, you know, what are some smart goals versus some not so smart goals. So on the left, you have not so smart goals. An example of this is I'll go to the gym more often, right? Yes, it's all future state. Uh, I'll go more often, but more often doesn't mean anything like more often than what, right? So it's not very specific. There's no time frame for completion. But on the other side, you can see it's very specific. It's present tense. You'll spend an hour in the gym four days a week. It's very specific, measurable time bound. So that's a good example of uh, smart versus not smart. Um, Another example, the third one down the page, I'll study harder for my next exam. Again, all future tense, not specific, versus you'll study, you know, I'll study one hour and do 10 practice problems every day. Very specific um, and is time-based and so on. Another example, you know, last one, I will read 50 books this month. Now, some people may be able to do that, but likely not attainable. It's very specific still that you have a time horizon, you have a target but is it truly attainable or not attainable you know for most people probably not attainable but for some people maybe so it's just depends on how we're looking at the problem statement and how we're defining the goals if we go to the next slide so what uh, the team did um, and mr gupta talked about this so last year there was a very dedicated workshop that the team team and the team leaders held to outline um, the major team objectives. And then we'll talk about the specific goals as well as part of these objectives. But the major team objectives from the last season were maintain and build relationships with the community, strengthen our robotics family, preparing team, prepare team for the future, become a world-class robotics team and qualify for last year's world championship. So those were the objectives. Now, if we go to the next slide, these objectives were then broken down into specific goals. So you can see in every, under every objective, you have specific goals and there's a lot. So this is a, this is a big uh, page with a lot of words on it. But if you think about, you know, look through each of the columns, when we look at maintain and build relationships with the community, they're very specific targeted goals that the team agreed on uh, to have for themselves and then execute and measure and attain these goals under each of these objectives. Uh, like win the impact award at one of the regionals, win the impact award at the world championship, 
another example who's the 32 team FLL qualifier, very measurable goals, have a time horizon, uh, and then align with the objective and align with the mission and vision of the team. Uh, similarly, if I look at another uh, one, strength and robotics family, host a team bonding event during a meeting such as a scavenger hunt, right? So again, one of the targeted goals under that uh, category of objectives that the team decided. So all these goals and objectives are available on this link that is pasted on the page. This should be accessible to everybody. These are the objectives and the goals that the team decided on in the last year's uh, uh, season. Um, and what we are going to do uh, as a breakout is that we are going to look at each of these uh, uh, categories of objectives and goals, so basically four uh, primary objectives and then goals underneath. Uh, and during the breakout, what I'd like to do is each of the breakout groups to take one of these. So maybe uh, room one takes the first column, room two takes the second one, room three the third, and so on. And talk about one, are these goals and objectives, do they still align for this team? And second, see if you can spot that are these some of these goals may or may not be very measurable, right? And so if you were given the opportunity to evaluate, look at them, and then also maybe make them more specific, how would you like to enhance and adapt these goals for this season? So that's the exercise. Uh, take a look at the, uh, it's also in the handout, so you can go to the handout page, uh, but then uh, room one, take the first column and so on. Just look through these goals and then just, you know, discuss in your breakout groups, um, do they still work for your 2024 goals and objectives? How can we make them better? Uh, what else we would like to add? And then we'll come back uh, and discuss that with the team. And this comes same same timing as before? Same timing as before. I think we can okay. do, uh, yeah, we can do two plus one again and then come back and discuss here. So I repasted the link to the handout slides in if you didn't have it earlier. So go ahead and click on that so you have it open. We're on slide nine of the um, handout slides. And there's a lot of other useful information to refer to in those previous slides too to guide your discussion as well. So here we'll, we go. I'll open up the rooms. Okay, so are we all back? I think so. Awesome. All right. So the breakout was to review and see, uh, you know, just sort of refresh the goals and objectives from last year and then sort of see whether they still apply for 2024 goals and objectives for the team. And then also think through, you know, elements of SMART as we're looking at goals specifically under each of those objectives. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go back to, or we can go back to that page. So we have that in front of us. And maybe, and then what I'll do is I'll invite uh, every one person from each room to share um, what the discussion was and are there other, what, what was your reflection and anything else you would like to share with the group here. So room one, volunteer from room one to share their content. Yeah, so um, I was in breakout room one and we talked about maintaining and building relationships with the community. And one project that we brought up that we're really doing is Husky Adapt. And we talked about like a goal that we could set for the season, like because we were planning on making kits and sending them out throughout the district, maybe even adapting more toys and see like maybe like send out two kits by like this by the um, before winter break, for example, which is a goal that we believe was attainable in a good time frame, measurable. And it hits all the smart goal criteria. Awesome, great idea, great idea, and I think uh, that's also a new initiative. So it's really great to, uh, for the team to connect it to the objectives, connect it to the mission and vision, and then make a goal that's achievable, time bound, uh, and can be done uh, before the holiday season. So great. Uh, group two. Yeah. So for um, strength in our robotics family. We thought that the first two bullet points applied well and they're goals that we see ourselves doing and have done in the past and continue to do this season. We spent a little more time discussing the last goal, which is to create surveys to measure 
team values and members, we just thought that was a little bit too broad and we wanted to try and think of a better way to kind of make that a more measurable goal by maybe saying like utilize surveys or talk about what specific types of surveys we would do in what form and that kind of stuff. Awesome. Awesome. I had the same reflection when I was reading this, this uh, material and sort of reflecting on our, you know, how is this connected and, and is this really measurable? And I had, I came to the same conclusion. I think the first two are great. The third one, there's room for improvement in terms of making it precise, more time bound, how many surveys, what kind of surveys, who are you going to send the surveys to? What are you going to do with those surveys when you get the responses back? So think about how we can evolve the third one um, and anything else that the team would like to do in the in under this objective. But yeah, very, very good discussion. Group three or room three. Okay, so we had prepare team for the future and we focused on the second bullet point. Uh, work on large projects during the off season to further the knowledge and development of our team. So we thought that was very broad because, and also large projects is something that we probably shouldn't be working on during off season. So mm -hmm. we rewrote a goal specifically for the Spindexer from the perspective of at the start of preseason. So we said that uh, create a Spindexer that uh, index eight inch balls at three balls per second uh, by the end of uh, by the end of preseason. Wow, great. That's fantastic. Yeah, making it very measurable and also good reflection, right? How the team is spending the time during preseason and uh, is working on large projects, a good activity for the team to engage in or should we be focusing on something else? Um, great, awesome. And I think, yeah, keep these ideas in mind because uh, we'll come to that, but uh, Mr. Schmidt already alluded to this, uh, that there will be a workshop for the team to dive deep into each of these uh, as part of that workshop and uh, further refine it. So definitely keep these ideas in mind and we can um, have the discussion during that workshop. Room four. So we looked at becoming a world-class robotics team for more of the, like making a good robot perspective rather than just like winning regionals. Um, and specifically we said no on-field like failures throughout the season. Um, and that's something we can measure, like how many times we fail. Um, last year, we pretty much did that from an electrical perspective. So it's reasonable that we could expand that to like fully no failures. Um, all the really good teams are good at not having major failures. So that's kind of like fits the definition of world-class robotics team. And then time-based, it's like per competition, like throughout the season. Awesome. Yes. I love that. And I'm sure everybody loves that. So this would be great to set that as one of the goals uh, for the team. Um, and, you know, just in my personal experience, right, when we uh, work uh, in our jobs and like have teams and we manage this, one of the things that, that's a good tactic to always keep in mind is as you're writing the goal uh, is to then have as measured by, right? So you write the goal and then say as measured by what, right? And then when you think about it from that perspective, then you know that, okay, this goal that I'm writing down is not just a very lofty kind of statement, but it's really measurable, time-based, uh, attainable. And we, we keep an eye on what the as measured by metric looks like for that particular goal. Okay, so great uh, breakout. So, just want to, uh, again, reflect, right? Goal without a plan is just a wish, right? We can have all the great goals, but then do we have the plan to achieve those goals? Um, so um, if you go to the next slide, I want to uh, bring back uh, the previous week's conversation that the team had uh, is, is, is all the discussion around project management, right? So as a team, as Husky's robotics uh, team, you know, the team decided to use uh, project management uh, tools such as, such as, you know, lightweight agile process uh, for Scrum, with, with Scrum, to really uh, create a process for the team to divide the work, uh, think about how we uh, break down the problem into list of small concrete deliverables that the team can work on in this you know, sprint-based fashion, 
so that we are having um, deliverables in each sprint. You plan, build, test, review, output uh, of every sprint to really achieve the end objective, the end goals that the team has put for themselves. Right. So again, reflect back to all of the conversations that the team had last week uh, in the project management uh, workshop uh, and reflect back again on how, uh, as you're thinking about what you're doing in pre-season, as you think about what the goals and objectives will be for during the season, the build season, the competition season, uh, think about, you know, having these sprint-based delivery, uh, you know, mechanism as your way to achieving the goals. And we also uh, talked about failure mode analysis. So again, remember, key takeaways from that uh, conversation on thinking through potential failure modes of various parts of the system, how those failures may have an effect on the system and what we can do to mitigate uh, the risks. Um, and then, uh, again, this is a series of workshops. And all of these workshops and discussions that we are having around servant leadership, crucial conversations, situational leadership, and crucial accountability, they're all contributing to uh, crystallizing for the team uh, the mission, the vision, and the goals, and how we define values for the team, and how every person on the team embodies that uh, as part of the culture that we project and the culture that we maintain and have in the team. So uh, again, just a quick reflection uh, from the servant leadership, right? Again, think about uh, having strong culture for the team is the strongest indicator of success. So how do we work with each other? How do we treat each other? How do we respond with empathy? How we have compassion, especially new members of the team may feel like a lot is happening. So how, how do we make everybody feel uh, welcome uh, and, and really embody the servant leadership mindset? Having the crucial conversations, you know, begin with the end in mind, make it safe. If you have a disagreement, if you have um, things that you want to uh, discuss, uh, again, making it safe as part of your, think about is this a crucial conversation and how can you make that conversation safe? Uh, situation leadership, again, adapting to the styles, right? Based on what the situation is, what the task is, what needs to happen. Uh, and then it, the objective again is to improve the overall team performance. Um, and finally, having accountability, everybody is accountable, right? On the team. so. Think about, you know, if you're seeing something, if you are, you know, not see, seeing the progress happen or you see something is not really as per to your expectation, uh, always keep in mind the fundamental attribution error, right? And what the different uh, sources of influence are there uh, for, for that behavior, or for that uh, observation that you have and make the invisible visible, right? Again, reflect back. I mean, the purpose of these workshops is to continue to evolve our thinking and continue to make the team uh, a much better inclusive team to be working on. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, anything you would like to add uh, as part of some of the previous workshops that you want the team to reflect on? I think that was fantastic. <laughs> um, no, that is a wonderful summary uh, for our final mentor-led um, workshop. Um, but, but no, I, I I love how you connected those. Awesome. No, great. And yeah, I think the, the, that's the that's the purpose of these workshops. So, um, you know, again, bringing everything back together. If we go to the next slide. Um, right. Uh, you know, we're we're all in this together. So we're all thinking about how we um, how we continue to improve the team, continue to improve self, and continue to improve the execution uh, so that we keep making progress towards our goal and every year is better than the previous year and so on. So how we continue to improve the team overall and what we leave for the future team members to come uh, on the team and experience uh, that's set by this everybody on the team. So think about, uh, you know, uh, Think about that. And some of the ideas that were surfaced, again, team development opportunity uh, potentially can have dedicated session that's facilitated by captains and mentors to further develop and communicate the Husky's vision, mission, and goals, right? Whole, whole team is welcome to attend, um, as well as all the project leaders, team leaders 
think about how you're setting goals for your teams, right? And are these goals smart goals? How can you add that qualifier, right, as measured by? So if you set a team, a goal for your team, how are you going to measure it? What's the mechanism to measure it? How do you know you're making progress towards that goal, right? So uh, always just keep that in mind to have smart as part of your thinking process and building plans to achieve those goals. Um, and as we mentioned in the beginning, there is a upcoming leadership workshop that's team-led, again, not mentor-led or uh, only led by one person. It's, it's basically for the entire team. So um, captains will have a, a discussion and a workshop with everybody on the team to continue to refine the mission, the vision, the objectives and goals. Again, reflecting back to what Mr. Gupta was saying earlier, that mission and vision not necessarily changes that much from year to year. Maybe there can be some finer, finer points, finer tweaks you can make, but definitely the objectives and goals are up to this team to think about and refine for the season. Uh, really what you're setting the bar for the team uh, for the season and you know how that bar is reflected in the objectives and the goals that the team creates for themselves. So there's a workshop next week. And final slide, go Huskies. Yeah, go Huskies. <laughs> well, thank you so much to Mr. Gupta and Ms. Kama. And I put in the chat here a link to the KFT for the Leadership Workshop Series. So please click on that link, leave some feedback about this session or any of the sessions or the series in general. Um, I just added some new stuff to it today based on the conversation the three of us had during a breakout session. Um, in addition, uh, this is rather relevant. I just learned today, I think it was today, um, that FIRST has revised their purpose and mission. Their vision statement looks the same. So I added a link there to where if you scroll down on the page I linked to, you can see first new purpose and mission. Um, and so interesting how how first as an organization too is is re envisioning um, these statements, uh, much like we are doing at the moment. So I thought that was great. So thank you to our mentors for hosting. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. And uh, we uh, since we don't have another meeting, please talk up. Um, in the chat that uh, next Monday is our revision of the, the goals and objectives. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Great participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. 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 Th